Welcome to our webinar, designed to help you feel prepared for Midwife Lobby Day, especially if you have never been. Midwife Lobby Day is organized by the Midwives Association of Washington State, or MOZ, every year. Midwives, students, and supporters have been traveling to Olympia for this important event for over 10 years. In 2018, we had a record turnout. More than 80 licensed midwives, midwifery students, and healthcare consumers braved the rain and showed up in Olympia. We will start today with a brief overview of the Lobby Day schedule. The legislative agenda for this year will be presented in a separate webinar that will be held live the week before this year's Lobby Day. Next up in today's webinar, our amazing lobbyist Amber will present some lobbying tips for us. After that, I will share with you some more general tips as well as a little bit about why Mid Midwife Lobby Day is so important. We will conclude with Lobby Day logistics, including information about where to park. If you're on the computer, you can see our typical schedule for Lobby Day. It's featured here on a slide with a yawning baby. But Lobby Day is not actually boring. In fact, a longtime midwife who came two years ago for the first time commented that she was surprised how energizing and enjoyable the day was. The schedule for the day will also be posted on the Moz website. Additionally, if you are on the Moz mailing list, look for emails from us closer to Lobby Day. If you don't typically get our emails, we may not have updated contact information for you. You can update your email address at moz.wildapricot.org slash join dash us. To make sure you get any emails we send with updates, including links to the legislative agenda, talking points, and more. As you can see here, we start off Lobby Day with a briefing at 8 a.m. at the home of our generous lobbyist, Amber, whose sweet family allows us to use her home as a base camp for the day. She is located within close walking distance to the Capitol, where we will spend the day. Her address is 1610 Water Street Southwest in Olympia, Washington, 98501. From there, you will follow your team lead to appointments. Starting at noon, a lunch option is also typically available at Amber's. If you would like to take advantage of this option, bring cash for two slices of pizza and salad. In the afternoon, we will be taking a group photo in the beautiful marble rotunda in the middle of the ledge building, which is the one featured here that looks like a rest with a rather prominent nipple. <laughs> the exact timing of the photo will be announced at the morning briefing. After appointments, we hope you will skip traffic and stay for dinner at Audrey's house. The address for dinner is 217 17th Avenue Southeast, Olympia, Washington. If you plan to come to Lobby Day, and especially if you plan to stay for dinner, please RSVP to Sasha at moz.legislative.liaison at gmail.com. We are more likely to get appointments with our actual representatives if they know someone from their district is coming. And now I would like to turn the slides over to Amber. And I'd like to confirm that you see a record button as well, Amber. Um, thanks, Sasha. Yes, I do see that we are recording. Great. Or, sorry, that was to Kristen. Um, so uh, welcome, everybody. I will be thrilled um, to welcome you to Olympia. Um, Advocacy Day is always really exciting, lots of fun. Um, next slide, please. So here I've just given um, just a sample layout of how a session is paced. This is true whether it's a long session or short session, this whole, the whole thing is just smaller or larger. But the, the series of cutoffs that you see as hatch marks on here pace the legislative session and keep things moving along in a timely way. Next session, or sorry, next slide. So, when contacting your legislator, there are various methods and I'm often asked, what is the most effective way to communicate with the legislator? Well, on lobby day, you will be here in person, which is 
probably the most effective. But the rest of the year, and for those of you who won't be able to uh, attend in person, you can still be an effective lobbyist by emailing your legislators, calling their offices, and staying in touch with them by mail or inviting them to see your practice. Um, of all of these, they're all effective. I think that um, in particular, legislative assistants have a preference for email these days. Often, even when I will call an office, they'll say, great, got it, please send an email with everything you just told me. So um, that's really the most reliable way to do things. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to run through a few tips on meeting with your legislator. This is sometimes a meeting that people are nervous about, so I think it has, um, it's helpful to have some guidance about how to do that effectively, especially since you have a very short period of time and you want to take advantage of those um, brief moments that you get with your legislator. Next slide. So prepare. All legislators have biographies online at the legislative website. It can be helpful to get a taste for what your legislators are interested in and what committees they work on for context for your meeting. Prepare what you want to say to them. Stories make policy. Of course, all the other parts are important to having good data. Um, but for you as a citizen, as a community member, um, it's the stories that matter. So if you think about why you do what you do um, and why you care and why you want it to, the legislator to take action on that, that is going to be a memorable interaction for them. So think a little ahead of time about how you want to convey your story. <clears throat> and then lastly, Schedules change frequently during the session. Members get called into other things. Things are really hectic. So just be prepared to be flexible. Um, meeting times can shift a little during the day and you may be meeting with staff instead of the legislator. And that is also a terrific opportunity um, to convey that information to their staff because staff brief legislators every day on meetings that they have as well. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so once you're at the meeting, um, make that local connection because again, these are your legislators and you share the same community. So kind of like what I said in the previous slide, you're thinking of ways to connect with them and tell them a personal story. So maybe, um, you know, saying, well, this is where I work at this place. You're probably familiar with that. Um, then that helps you to make a connection with them. Orient the legislator in very basic terms. And I can't emphasize enough how important this is. You are an expert in what you are talking about, as is all of the meetings that a legislator has during that day. So if you can imagine an afternoon, a full afternoon for them where they are having 10 to 15, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 to 15 minute appointments from everyone talking about shoreline management to um, energy policy to midwifery, there's just going to be a, a lot <laughs> of what they, of what they're going to hear and hard to, um, to orient themselves at each meeting. I used to partner um, in lobbying with a former legislator and he said that it would regularly happen that it wasn't until the end of the meeting with a, with a group that he would figure out what it was that they were actually talking about. So just be very basic in the, in the beginning um, you know, unless it's someone you already know, but um, I'm a midwife, a midwifery student, a consumer. Are you familiar with midwifery care? Um, just try to get indications from the member that they're tracking before you get going. And then listen to your legislators' questions. Give some 
quiet space in the meeting for them to be able to react to you. And it's completely fine if you don't know the answer to any question, just let them know you don't know and we will get back to you um, with whatever, whatever questions that they have. Um, next slide, please. So asking for a commitment, <clears throat> sometimes you, know, you can have a pleasant conversation with the legislator. They do a lot of nodding and you know, this sounds nice. Yes, I could support that. But that doesn't actually come through with a commitment that they would actually vote a certain way on a bill or make a request for a budget item. So try to be specific about those. Say, you know, we're, we're working on this bill. Will you be willing to vote yes on this bill and, and mark that down? Or will you be willing to request this budget amount from your budget leaders? If they're undecided, offer to send them more information and follow up with them. If you're able, you know, we know that you have really busy schedules too, but chasing down that commitment can be worthwhile. And then request that your legislator utilize you as a resource. If you aren't decided today, or if you are decided, please feel free to reach out to me for further information or for, for support on, on taking the specific action. Um, next slide, please. So leave the door open for future advocacy. So we see legislators of all stripes in Olympia, which is great. Our issues for midwifery have been bipartisan. Everything that we have worked on in the past has been with bipartisan support. So just keeping that in mind when you're talking with legislators, if A, they're not especially supportive of what you were talking about, or they otherwise are expressing politics that you don't agree with, just keep the context of um, that we will likely need to work with that person in the future and to be polite and focused on your goal, um, which is a long-term relationship and support from that member. Um, next slide, please. And then lastly, leave your contact information in our one pager and then send them a short thank you note. It's fine to send that as paper or an email is completely fine as well. This is a way to reinforce the conversation with you had with, with that member. Because, you know, as I said before, they're seeing lots of people. It's a way to remind them, um, I'm a constituent. I came to see you on Midwives Lobby Day. I appreciate that you said that you would make this particular budget request or that you would vote yes on this particular bill. Thanks so much. Um, so that can be a very effective way to keep things moving forward um, in your relationship with that legislator. And now I'm going to turn it back to Kristen. Hello. Um, my name is Kristen Eflund. I'm a midwife across the Cascade Mountains in central Washington and a committee member of the Moz Legislative and Health Policy Committee. I'm excited to spend a few minutes with you today as we prepare for Moz's Lobby Day in Olympia, which occurs at the beginning of each year when our state representatives are in session at the Capitol. Today, I'd like to start us off with the great toddler question, why? Why do Washington midwives and supporters travel to Olympia to spend the day there educating our elected officials once a year? I'd love to share the answer with you because it's what I love about lobbying. Interacting with the members who represent the legislative branch of our democracy. This work is filled with potential and opportunity. For those of you here who are midwives or aspiring midwives, I would venture to bet that most of us wanted to enter the profession of midwifery for more than one reason. We wanted to be midwives, but I believe that most of us also want to affect change, to change the culture of pregnancy and childbirth for all pregnant persons and their families, who we also hope will come participate in Lobby Day. This is no small charge, but your annual participation in Lobby Day, whether you're a midwife, a consumer, 
a family member, a student, or an apprentice can help bring about the change you wish to see, especially on a policy level. Changes to our profession, including increased access to the profession, which also includes the affordability and sustainability of practicing in Washington, and changes to the wider culture. As you can see here on our slide, if you are interested in expanding protections for breastfeeding parents, preserving the midwifery scope of practice, or expanding it, expanding protections for working pregnant and postpartum people, increasing access to midwifery care, especially in underserved areas. If you're interested in increasing access to the profession or funding new birth centers, especially in underserved areas. If you're interested in increasing funding for, for and access to scholarships and loan repayment for midwives, including at the federal level, lobbying is for you. And there's even more. Lobbying can bring about streamlining health insurance credentialing, managing the costs to practice. All of these things can be achieved through policy and legislative efforts. Perhaps you can tell after spending just a few minutes with me that I am an optimist. In reality, we know that change is often more slow and incremental than we want it to be. But when you look over time and see what we have been able to accomplish historically, you can begin to see the cumulative effect of our ability to influence policy. Don't underestimate the potential of your annual participation and engagement. Now that we have an answer to our toddler question, why, we can move on to the type of question we might get from our teenagers. What has lobbying done for me? Even if you have never participated in Lobby Day or never contacted your representatives to advocate on your own behalf or on the behalf of parents, babies, and families, Moz has been working for you, organizing a midwife lobby day in the state capitol for decades. And even before Moz officially existed, midwives, consumers, and student midwives worked on our behalf, educating legislators and affecting policy changes from which we and our clients still benefit today. Much of what you think about as the defining characteristics of practicing licensed midwifery in Washington were won through advocacy. As you can see here on our slide, and as you may know, in Washington, most private insurance companies must offer in-network licensed midwives. Licensed midwives can accept Medicaid here. CPMs have a clear path to licensure. Our licensing fees are significantly reduced as a result of lobbying. Breastfeeding protections were added to law partly because of our advocacy. JUA liability coverage, also called malpractice insurance, won through policy and legislative efforts. Paid family medical leave, the most liberal in the country. Also, incarcerated persons have legally protected access to midwifery and doula care. Anti-shackling protections were won for incarcerated persons in labor through Midwife Lobby Day in part. Access to HEAL law and recent evidence through the University of Washington system, library system. Also, LMs are eligible for state-funded scholarship and loan repayment. This is the only place I believe in the country. Nurses, registered nurses are allowed and enabled to work for licensed midwife without risking their license. And Medicaid payments um, for home and birth center birth are no longer just for prenatal care and postpartum care, as was true in the 80s. So all of this, we have lobbying um, and legislative and health policy efforts to thank. The work accomplished by those who, has, who have gone before us has been awesome, but there is more to be done. In fact, there is much more potential for us to actualize. To reach this potential, we need your participation and that of our colleagues. We hope that more of us can make it to Olympia in person each year. And for those who can't make it, we hope you will contact your representatives on your own time. This slide lists some of the examples of the potential influence we could have. As you can see here on this slide, we could ask for funding for new birth centers. We could work to improve reimbursement for high quality care. 
we could try to expand options for VBAC or vaginal birth after cesarean. We could seek additional funding for education and loan repayment. We could seek pay equity. We could work to expand, preserve, and defend our scope of practice. We hope we don't have to defend it, but if we did, <laughs> we'd be ready for it, right? Um, we could ask for revisions to the LM drug legend and devices. We um, can try to expand the role of the midwifery advisory committee or try to get a midwifery board. We can raise awareness about the benefits of midwifery care. We can seek more employment opportunities for licensed midwives, such as at federally qualified health centers. We could ask for increased reimbursement for birth centers. Oh wait, we already did that and got it. <laughs> That's from an old slide. <laughs> I am passionate about getting more midwives, consumers, apprentices, and students to lobby day each year. I have always imagined that one reason we have such low participation some years by practicing midwives might be due to a lack of information. This webinar was designed to help you feel more prepared and informed and to help you see why our participation is vital. We have organized this webinar today to help you feel ready to come to Lobby Day and join a team as we approach our lawmakers with the goal of affecting positive policy changes for our profession and the families we serve. It is important to realize that it is more enjoyable for your legislators to meet with you and get to know you, their constituents, the people whom they came to Olympia to represent and serve, than to always meet with professional lobbyists whom they see every day and whom they know are hired to represent various interests. As you can see here, you are a constituent. If you're a midwife, you interact with dozens and hundreds of your representative's constituents every year. So your perspective is really valuable. If you're a family member or a consumer, you're the reason we're all here. Your perspective is invaluable. And for students and apprentices, you are the future. You might choose to practice elsewhere if it was unappealing to practice here in Washington. So thank you for putting a face on these issues, sharing your personal message. While the role of professional lobbying is also critical to our legislative successes, and thank you very much to Amber for that, um, you as a constituent have a special and unique role to play. While you may not know a lot about lobbying, you do know a lot about midwifery. You are the expert in the room when it comes to midwifery and how the midwifery model of care affects parents, babies, and families. You are there to make our issues personal and help your legislators see your concerns and hopes through your eyes. You do not need to memorize anything to be able to come and speak with your elected officials. And you can also come and not say anything at all. Your role at Lobby Day is to be yourself. Your presence alone is important, and it's also great if you can convey a personalized message as it relates to our legislative agenda. Don't worry if you can't remember all the details or can't answer a question. Again, as Amber said, that's what we hire her for, and she can always be back in touch with anyone you meet who needs more information. Rest assured, you do not have to visit your representatives on your own. We travel to visit our legislators in teams, but I will conclude with a slide, nonetheless, containing some ideas for things you can say when meeting with a legislator when you don't know what else to say or do. You can always just collect information about where they stand. You can say, if someone says something that is hard to hear, I can really understand why you would have that impression. That's a very midwife thing to say, <laughs> and a good one when you're riled up. You can say, Thank you for being a supporter of licensed midwives or midwifery in Washington, because at some point, every one of our legislators who's been there for any time at all has supported at least one of our issues. You can also say, do you have any specific concerns or questions? And that information gathering is really helpful um, for our lobbyists and for our um, health policy and legislative committee. You can tell your personal story, although you have to keep it brief because you don't have a lot of time. <laughs> And you can ask your representative, can you tell me what you know about midwifery? 
And now I would like to turn the slides over to Sasha, our dedicated legislative liaison who has been volunteering her time for many years now to make Lobby Day a great success. Hi, I'm Sasha Henry and I help with logistics on Lobby Day. Getting to the Capitol is very straightforward. I-5 has signs that are easy to follow or you can map to the address on this slide which is 416 Sid Sydney Avenue, Sid Snyder Avenue Southwest in Olympia 98504. The link on this slide also has information on getting to the Capitol using public transportation if you need to do that. Traffic on I-5 can be unpredictable through Joint Base Lewis McCord, so leave plenty of time and check the traffic before leaving if you can. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Sorry, Kristen, can I have the next slide? Is that the right one, Amber's House Lobby Day? There we go, thank you. Yeah. Our Lobby Day headquarters will be at the home of our fabulous lobbyist, Amber. Thank you so much for letting us use your house. You can leave your gear there during the day and come back to relax and have a snack if you have a gap between appointments. Even though her house is really close to the Capitol, it ends up being a lot of walking over the whole day. So be sure to wear comfortable shoes. It's only about a five minute walk from Amber's house over to Audrey's. So if you're staying for dinner, you won't need to move your car. And don't forget to RSVP to me if you'd like to stay for dinner. We'll be starting the briefing at eight o'clock sharp at Amber's and you don't want to miss the briefing. It has a lot of great information. So be sure to leave extra time for parking. There's a very limited amount of two hour parking in Am Amber's neighborhood, very limited though. So it's best not to count on parking there. Also be aware that parking is very strictly enforced during the legislative season. Next slide, please. Campus visitor parking is a good option and often has spots early in the morning. The north and south diagonals and visitor information lots are very close to Amber's house, definitely within walking distance, but they do fill up quickly. The GA building lot and natural resources lots are the next closest, also walkable. There are other lots that are farther away, and if you park there, you can take the free dash shuttle, which I'll talk more about later. You can check out the link on this slide for a map showing these farther away lots and more information about them. All the campus lots are $2 an hour from eight in the morning to five in the evening, and they take credit and debit cards as well as cash. Next slide, please. Most of the street parking in downtown Olympia is metered. The meters are color coded to show how much they cost and how long you can park. If possible, you want a gray meter. That will allow you to park for up to nine hours and it's only 50 cents an hour. Unfortunately, gray meters do not take cards, but all meters now have a pay by phone option that requires an app, which you will probably want to install ahead of time. You can use the links on this slide for more information about that. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry, previous slide. If you don't mind walking, there's free parking along the Deschutes Parkway on the west side of Capitol Lake. There's a path around the lake with a connecting path that zigzags up the hill to the Capitol campus. It does take a few minutes and it's a steep walk up the path, but it's quite beautiful and it's free. Next slide, please. Olympia offer, operates a free shuttle that runs from the Capitol campus through the downtown core to the farmer's market every 12 to 15 minutes from seven in the morning to six in the evening. The farmer's market isn't open during the week at this time of year, but you can park there for $2 an hour and take the free shuttle back up to the Capitol. The cost for parking in this lot is $2 an hour. Next slide, please. Depending on your team's schedule, you will probably have 45 minutes to an hour and a half for lunch. You can bring a lunch and eat it on the Capitol campus. If the weather is good, there are a lot of nice places to sit and eat or you can come back to Amber's for lunch. You can bring a lunch or there will be pizza available. Sign up for the pizza when you check in in the morning. 
it's $8 cash for two slices of pizza and salad. If you want to go out to lunch, there are a few restaurants on Capitol Way within a couple blocks of the Capitol campus. Most of the restaurants are a little farther away, probably about nine or 10 blocks. So you can walk or you can take the free dash shuttle. Some teams don't have enough time to go out for lunch, but all teams will be done with appointments by about four. Um, most of them will be done a bit earlier than that. So you'll have a little time to decompress before dinner at Audrey's. There are places to go nearby for a cup of coffee or a glass of wine or a snack, or you can walk or take the dash bus downtown to the main restaurant area. If you have kids, the public library is about six blocks away from Lobby Day headquarters and is open from 11 to seven. We also have a very good children's museum. You'd probably need to drive to that. You could walk it to it, but it'd be quite a long walk. They're open 10 till five. The nearest public park with play equipment is about 12 blocks, but it is quite close to the free dash shuttle line. If you have any additional questions about logistics, feel free to email me at moz.legislative.liaison at gmail.com. I live in Olympia and I'm happy to answer any of your questions about coming to the Capitol. And make sure to let me know you're coming so I can connect you with your legislator. I look forward to seeing you all at Lobby Day. Thank you so much, Sasha. In conclusion, please don't hesitate to reach out if you, if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks for joining us today and we hope we all hope to see you in Olympia at the beginning of every year. Don't forget to check your email or the Moz website for the most up-to-date information about Lobby Day as it approaches. The website is www.washingtonmidwives.org slash advocacy. We also have a slash Lobby Day page. Moz also has a Facebook page where the event information can be found and where you can register for the event. And keep up the good work in the field. Thanks again for listening today and for all that you do for Washington families.